crazy news for y'all today, man. This is like breaking news. It's about your boy Diddy. He just got subpoenaed by the hotel that was in Miami. You know, they say Mariah Carey is involved. It's a host of people that's involved. And if this goes down, everybody in the industry is going down because you know Diddy is tied down to everybody, which Jay-Z is tied down to everybody, which all the executives, all the different celebrities from your I don't want to go too deep in the names, but I say a few like your Will Smiths, your Kevin Hart's, your Oprah's, your Tyler Perry's. It's it's gonna be a crazy thing. The Rock, I mean, you Tyrese, I mean, you you name them. They're basically all connected and tied together with all of these celebrities and sports players and everything. And your boy Diddy is gonna tell on everybody. So I, everybody's been quiet and they're not saying anything. And Jay Z is keeping his distance. Your boy Diddy is about to tell everybody. You really think he's gonna get that much time and do that much time? I wanna say that one more time. Do you think T Diddy is gonna do all of this time while y'all not doing time and doing the same thing that he was doing, getting away with it? And he's doing the maximum time. This dude don't know what jail looks like, feels like. I don't even know if he's not to spell it. See, I'll check this out. Y'all gotta check this one out. I'm gonna keep this one short and simple. Y'all gotta check this one out. Let me know what y'all think. And uh, keep subscribing, keep tuning in. Showing the love, I appreciate it, man. Drop the comments on this one. This is this is exclusive. Appreciate that. Peace, y'all. One of Diddy's accusers uh, now has gone to police, and that might not be Diddy. When first hearing this, might be like, "Well, what's the big deal?" This is the woman who sued him, claiming that in the early 2000s she accused Diddy of trafficking her at his white parties. Some of them in Miami, some. In, in New York, she has now filed a report with police. So, you know, she filed the lawsuit first, which this, we told you about that lawsuit. Right. But now she's gone to police to sort of put it on the record with them that these are my allegations about what happened in Miami Beach. Right. So she's filed that. The statute of limitations is probably run. But here's why Diddy really will be concerned about this, because she went to the police last week, sat down and had a conversation with them. Uh, Adria English is her name. And Adria... Um, told police much of the same allegations that were in the lawsuit. Right. Uh, she just separated out the ones that would have occurred, allegedly occurred in Miami Beach. But uh, the police said, look, there's not much we can do with this. Right. But they decided that they can share this information with other law enforcement, and that's where Diddy may be concerned. Charles, the issue here is uh, whether or not these uh, allegations will have any bearing on the federal investigation into Diddy. As you know, he's being investigated for sex trafficking, drug trafficking, and uh, other federal uh, crimes. The question is how her allegations will ultimately impact yeah, if they have any the right. federal investigation. Well, it's not like the, the feds, law enforcement, they obviously knew about these claims. It's not going to help Diddy. I mean, obviously, yeah. that, that's without question. It's just a matter of does it hurt him Will at all? And if, and if it does, how much does it hurt him? I mean, right. So, you know, you'd imagine that Adrian English went in to Miami Beach PD and gave them some names of people who were involved in right. this. Um, well, now Miami Beach PD will be sharing that those names and that information with the feds. And then who knows where they go from it. But while they're in the middle of this very intense investigation, uh, convening a grand jury, trying to get an indictment against Diddy. Uh, any one witness could be the one who unlocks this finally right. for the feds. You would imagine they're not there yet because there hasn't been an indictment. Right. So they're if still they had it, they'd indict him, Charles. I mean, that, that, that much is clear. They're, right. they're going after him. They don't have it yet or else we'd know. Catherine Escalera, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. How many more are out there? You guys are right. That's exactly what it is. It could be a floodgate opening. You never know where this is going. He's already in court. So the lawyers are definitely going to be looking for more victims. You know, <laughs> they're out there. And right. uh, they're going to come through. And this could get bad.
Right. As they begin talking to other people now, to Charles's point, who knows what they uncover? So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Baby, it's a new day for Diddy to be sweating buckets because allegedly he thought he paid off Kim Porter's niece, Raven Walden, who, by the way, had fled to Vietnam because she didn't feel safe around Diddy. But Raven is allegedly back and has reportedly even talked to the feds and spilled everything she knows about Diddy, which is a lot because she also doubled up as a babysitter after Kim died. Like I said, child, Diddy must be sweating buckets. Okay, y'all remember when we were talking about how Kim Porter's family wanted Kim's case reopened? And I'm talking about her family, not some random person or a friend somewhere. Her family. In fact, there were reports that Kim's family was seeking legal advice and was in pursuit of slapping Diddy with a lawsuit for wrongful death. The family was even said to have had physical evidence to support their case. Apparently, the family was, and still is, undeniably shattered by Kim's death because they feel that she didn't die from natural causes. And to make matters worse, Diddy has reportedly kept the twins from having a relationship with their family in Georgia. He has isolated them and kept them from any communication. It's almost as if that side of the family doesn't even exist. Well, one family member is back on RTLs, but she's not really a stranger because she initially filed a lawsuit against Diddy for wrongful termination as a Jane Doe before it was revealed that she's actually Kim's niece Raven. In fact, Diddy's team is who revealed her identity after she filed the lawsuit when they said in a statement, Raven is not the niece of Kim Porter as she falsely alleges, nor is there any legal basis for this case to be filed under the anonymity as a Jane Doe. Raven was a part-time babysitter to the twins who Mr. Combs kept on the job back in 2018 to provide continuity for the twins following the untimely death of their mother. Mr. Combs graciously permitted Raven to live in his home with her son and treated them like family. Mr. Combs will take swift and immediate action to protect his family against these false claims. So a month after filing her lawsuit, Raven also amended it to include her name, saying that she filed under Jane Doe because she was desperate to preserve her privacy and was terrified of possible physical harm to her and her babies. She also said that she initially filed under Jane Doe because she was fearful of further shaming, blaming, and retaliation. I want you to think about this. Sean Carter is responsible for enacting Hype Williams to put a Leo on a faulty plane to move her out the way as punishment for rejecting him and so he could level up Beyonce, who was struggling. Let's just say allegedly that happened. Now I want you to think about 106th and Park with Mary J. Blige. Free, who is a victim of Sean Carter. Yeah. Mary J. Blige, who is a victim of Sean Combs, are sitting there talking about the death of Aaliyah amongst each other. Think about that. You got a Diddy victim, you got a Jay-Z victim, and you got a superstar gone. They know what happened, and yet they had to sit there and have that conversation like they didn't know who did it. Allegedly, Confess that that Lifetime Achievement Award was a hush payment for your asshole and all of the many years of abuse. Cause that, uh, that wasn't no Lifetime. I'm still mad. People say, "Why are you saying that about Usher?" Oh, so I'm mad. Shit. I'm mad that people. I'm mad that people aren't more mad at Usher. Oh. Because somewhere along the way, he went from a victim to a procurer, to a head turner. Like, let's just be honest about Usher. Is he a victim or is he a cooperate agent? We all know that that chili was a PR relationship. We know that, right? That chili is real. Him and chili. That wasn't, who believes that that was real? Now, it all looked cute, older, hot, sexy woman, younger guy. And both very good looking people. Yes. So, fuck did he end up with that bitch after that? <laughs> Let's be clear, he was still a young man. Let's be clear, he was still a young man and he was us. Just so if there was vanity involved, how do you go from chili to bitch? And don't say it's true love. <laughs> she, 
she was. I tell you what I do know. I tell you how I know how he goes from chili to that thief. You know she a thief. You, you want to know how his wife was in a Tamika? You want to know how she was known in the styling game? As the just stole everything. That's how she was able to do more video shoots as she had clothes because she was robbing. Whoa, whoa. This was a retail queen turned stylist. That's who that is. Boosted her way and she was down with the freak wild. A person that used to do business with them is no longer with them because he no longer wanted to do biz business with Jay-Z and Diddy, which means view it has had ties to Jay-Z and Diddy all along. Want to know what's even more interesting than that? They used my brother Jay French to get to me. Not French. Guess who brought him there? The Yang Yang twins, who I know for a fact are government informants. Not French. And if you're not sure about it, Maybe you should ask Calvin, Wendy Williams' husband, what he did to get them in trouble to make sure they became federal informants. And now they're in Vegas looking for true believer artists and bringing them to a company where there are people who are supposed to be billionaires. And one of the owners looks like he could be Leor Cohen's first cousin. Interesting. Kim was one of the first girls who was brave enough to get tapes and get what she needed to get. You understand? This is commerce. This is bank exchange on flesh and pride and ego. Tamika knew she could get Usher because she had evidence of what he was doing with the Diddla. And guess what? Rather than going to the police and doing the right thing when that boy drowned on Lake Lanier, Usher did nothing for his stepchild. Matter of fact, I know for a fact he paid money to have that investigation <clears throat> shut down. And there has been talks that she was willing to sacrifice her child to get ahead. Now, don't forget, not long after that, she went to the coma. You remember she's in the coma? Because she got banished off. She had to get that plastic surgery cheap. She did. That's why she went out of country. Because she was told over here in the States that nobody would perform that ceremony. It was too dangerous for her. That surgery was too dangerous for her. And that went somewhere else. She kept going until she got somewhere with it and they fixed up real good. And guess what? Not long after that, her and us was over. Yeah. Wasn't no love there. It's blackmail. 50 Cent is trying to take down um, Diddy. No, he's trying to move Diddy and Jay-Z out the way so he can run it. And the truth is, I ain't mad at him. I just don't trust him. Because the truth is, he would just be another kind of monster in another kind of way. He don't want things to change. He just want to be the one that's running it. See? Easiest thing to do is to take your, your 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 enemy's feet and hold them to the fire for things you know that they won't admit. Which is why when that C and D came out, he took all of that Diddy shit down because of his tape. Say, what is it with all of these pretenders? And now they got an even bigger one named Curtis Jackson. They should check the EPA report and the toxic waste he's been allowing to be dumped around the property of Millennium Studios for cheap cash. And I'm not saying allegedly, Curtis. I know what you've been doing. You don't get no 
about what happens to those people in that town, but I do. I love the people in that town. I just wonder how you like that man I sent you. Because he really didn't think you was gonna go for him. You better do right by Shreveport or I'ma let everybody know that Diddy do wop bop ain't the only taste you got. Diddy getting arrested. I believe he gonna, I, I believe he's coming in September. Cause you gotta realize the grand jury intervened. They may have 45 days. 60 days, 90 days. They never usually go past 120 days. They got enough information and they probably got enough stuff that he's probably willing to plea bargain or see if they're going to give him that. Or if they're going to let him plead or something. But I don't think the grand jury is going past 120 days. And this is inside information you're getting, right? Or this is something you believe personally? Well, I believe that personally. And then for the fact of the matter is that I know somebody who testified to the grand jury to the uh, Homeland Security. And they probably, they was made reference to some like, uh, they thought that they was gonna they couldn't go nowhere around in September or whatever like that. So maybe around in September something to happen. Well, that's what they waiting on. That's why all these documentaries and these people are waiting on. They waiting on him to get arrested. They waiting on the grand jury to say we find him guilty, we and indict him in the whole nine yards. And watch how many documentaries and how many uh uh YouTubers and everybody going to talk about it and everything like that. Why in God's name would the industry force him into a group with the biggest head in the world? He found sobriety and now you're around someone who's snorting in front of you all day, all night. That's like saying we're going to do an intervention for Diddy and we're going to make him and R. Kelly roommates. Are you kidding me? Bruno Mars may be being exploited by a major casino in terms of his residency whilst exploiting his vices. Jaguar Wright is back again, and this time she jumped on an explosive tell-all interview and revealed some sinister things about Bruno Mars and why he disappeared from the industry. This comes after Bruno was exposed for allegedly being broke and owing over $50 million. It's unclear how exactly Bruno managed to blow through this much money, but according to Jaguar, the industry had something to do with it. And that's why Bruno ran away from the industry and rarely makes any appearances anymore. There are some industry heads that want to completely eliminate him, and he's apparently doing everything in his power to protect himself before it's too late. Okay, so as most of y'all already know, Bruno is one of the most successful musicians in the world, and he's been popping hits out like it's nothing. I mean, the man has 19 top 10 hits, with eight of them being number ones. He's been on several record-breaking world tours as well, and has accumulated over $175 million. But it turns out, he ain't actually as rich as we thought, because he's allegedly been a raging head for some years now and has been silently gambling all his money away. Not only that, but it turns out his coke and gambling addiction is also- That's why Diddy jazzed up that day when we was at the party. He grabbed let me by his collar and was like, don't ever play with that girl ever again. Talk about me. Like, don't ever play with her. Like, so you'll play with their budget, play with talent. Like, y'all playing with me. I will never forget the day, bro. Diddy party. We went to the uh, little private area behind the, uh, because he had a house behind his house. Like, he had a house, a backyard with a, his backyard with a fat bed. And then it had, like, a miniature little whatever. Me and Lemmy go upstairs. They tell him that he can't bring his security. He went in with no security, so it's just me and Lemmy. We go up in there. We go upstairs. He's like, what's up, Diddy? Um, you know, you, you met Krishan. Uh, you uh, gave her kisses on the cheek. Just wanted to follow up. Uh, I'm glad that you, Krishan. And then he grabbed Lemmy by his neck. It was like... But do you <laughs> with her? Like, don't play with her. All she need is love. Don't play with her. Don't play with her. And I didn't understand that till my checks start coming back short from the subscriptions of Crazy in Love till he started putting people, like, personally putting people that doesn't me that I had, like, street beef with on the show. Um, where's the security at? When all them people throwing eggs, like, it was just like, 
come on, y'all. You playing. You playing. You the Diddy was going to be sued by the cartel because he shortened up the, uh, he the drug supply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure he did. All that too, see? Do you know how many victims woke up out of their sleep knowing Wait, knowing that they was, you know, they not confused no more, Wait, you know? Jaguar, do you really believe Diddy was handling or using drugs? Of course. Seriously. Okay. Damn. Okay. Did you not hear the little white man we just spoke to? And talking about using the ketamine. We heard, we heard And you gotta new you gotta do the ketamine. It's a horse tranquilizer. I mean, you got ketamine. Did you hear what I said? It's a horse Did he said you gotta use the horse tranquilizer if you want to get closer to the music? But you can't feel anything. Kanye said mm -hmm. you gotta use the nitrous oxide. They say his 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 dentist, who's who's who doesn't like a dentist. Isn't it funny? Because his mama's surgeon didn't look like much of a surgeon either. That it gets a little wild. Nah, it gets real simple like that. Now all of a sudden, his doctor is saying that he's unstable and his doctor saying this, so if something happens and his doctor give him something, and he Michael Jackson's up out of here, then, you know. And now they got an even bigger one named Curtis Jackson. They should check the EPA report since he's been there and the toxic waste he's been allowing to be dumped around the property of Millennium Studios for cheap cash. And I'm not saying allegedly, Curtis. I know what you've been doing. You don't get no f about what happens to those people in that town, but I do. I just wonder how you like that man I sent you. Because he really didn't think you was gonna go for him. F you, Curtis. You better do right by Shreveport, or I'ma let everybody know that Diddy do what Bop ain't the only taste you got. Curtis, I'd have more respect for him if he came out the closet. It seems like because he's a lot more Bogart than Brooklyn. It seems like um, Fifty Cent is trying to take down um, Diddy. No. He's trying to move Diddy and Jay-Z out the way so he can run it. And the truth is, I ain't mad at him. I just don't trust him. Because the truth is, he would just be another kind of monster in another kind of way. He don't want things to change. He just want to be the one that's running it. See? Easiest thing to do is to take your, 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 your enemy's feet and hold them to the fire for things you know that they won't admit. Which is why when that C and D came out, he took all of that Diddy shit down. Because of his tape. Sex. But Shine is a con artist. Let me just put that right out here now. Everybody's like, oh, we know Shine was innocent. No, you don't know a daggone thing because he's far from innocent. But now that you've gotten to this place where you are the head of the opposition party and you want to ascend to prime minister of Belize, when you got deported back and you started interacting with Puffy, the prime minister put a rule of law in that said, if you were convicted of a crime anywhere in the world, you could never be the prime minister in Belize. So now he's going to jockey off of me saying, Shine didn't shoot me to try to leverage himself to get that prime minister seat. Cause your homeboy keeps sending his little plane over there. The Rico say, moving bodies of females and stuff. You want that access to power and he wants you to have that access to power so he can move those human bodies through your island, you ain't nothing but a penny Annie shyster, a dressed up fraud, you a liar. You're not going to use me to leverage your way into the prime minister seat.